Hi everyone. So in this video, we're going to take a look at many to many relationships. Um, this is something that a few people have asked for. Um, I want to start by looking at a more simple relationship and then we'll kind of go on to the many to many so you can see the difference. I think the more you see those simpler ones, the more you'll understand how everything, how everything works in Laravel. Um, so the idea I thought for today was that we'd think about a to-do list. So I'm going to set up um, a really simple data structure in my database, which is going to have a to-do. So we'll have a model that is a to-do item. So that's going to have a description, a title, and a Boolean, whether or not you completed it. We're going to have boards so that you have to create a board and then you add your to-dos to that board. So a board will have lots of to-dos and a to-do will just have one board. And then we're going to have tags and tags are going to be something you can tag your to-dos with. So maybe you want to categorize them somehow. Um, and that's going to be a many-to-many -many relationship because one tag might have many to-dos and one to-do might have many tags. Think about it kind of like YouTube tags. So let's get into the coding. I've set up, um, I'm using Vagrant and Homestead and I've set up a, a new fresh Laravel project. The first thing you have to do if you're going to do anything um, with databases and models is you need to set up your .env, your environment file. So for Homestead and Vagrant, the default um, settings you need to change are the name of the database. So I'm changing that to Homestead. And the username is Homestead. And the password is secret. The first thing that I do when I'm making a web application like this is that I will create my models. So I've already described what I'm thinking about in terms of data. Now I'm going to create those models, create all my data relationships, and then play with those in Tinker and make sure they all work. And then I'll then I move on eventually to the front end. So we've got three models we want to create. And we're going to do that using artisan. So I'm in PHP artisan. And I can tab to auto complete artisan because it's just a PHP file. So I'm going to make a model um, to do. And I'm going to put minus M, which will create the database migration for us as well. Then I'm going to create a board. So I pushed up on the keyboard to get the last line that I typed in on the bash terminal. And then that's a quicker way of doing things. So again, I'm going to push up on the keyboard and then that gets the last command. And then I'm going to change this to tag and that's going to be our other model. Notice with the names of all these models that I kept them as singular and not plural. You might be tempted to call it to do's or tags, but we want those. Our model name is going to be singular and our database is where things are going to be plural. So what um, Laravel has done, what Artisan has done, is it's created, if we go into our app and our models folder, we have now a PHP class for each model that we've created. And then in our database folder, in our migrations folder, we have a file for each of these tables. So we need to first define all of the columns in our tables by going into these migration files, and then we'll have a look at the model files themselves. The first thing I wanna do is look at the boards table so we're going to, in this up function, remember the up function in a migration is where when we run a migration, this is what it's performed to do this migration and down is the opposite. So you can see down, it drops the table boards and up, it creates boards. So let's add some columns. So we're going to have a table we're going to add a character column, which is going to be our, the title of this board. And let's say we're going to let people have 100 characters for that. And we're going to have a description, which will be a long text. And that's all we need for our boards table. Next thing we're going to mess with is our to-dos uh, table. And so for to-dos, we're going to have pretty much the same thing as we've got in boards, actually. I just copy and paste. We're going to have a title and a description. Uh, we're also going to have a Boolean, 
because we need to know if we've actually completed this to do or not. All of these functions, by the way, all of the different um, things, cons we can add, you can go to the Laravel documentation and find a list of them all, um, and they're all there. It's really, really easy to find. The documentation of Laravel is super good. Next, I'm going to save that and then have a look at our tag table. Our tags. Uh, this is going to be the most simple, actually, because a tag is just going to be a name. So let's do character and the name. And then we want our tags to be quite short. So I'm going to say a character limit of 30. Before we get any further, I want to set up some one relationship in our in our database here. So we wanted to have a to do would belong to a board. So we need to create a foreign key in our to do's table. So I'm going to do that by doing table and it's going to be an unsigned big integer which will match the type of the primary key in our board table. If you're using different versions of Laravel than me, you might have to change um, the type that you're using here. Because Lara I think there was some changes between Laravel 4 and beyond that one. I can't remember exactly what the change is, but when, when there was a change, but there was a change. So we've got an unsigned big integer for our board ID. So that's going to point to our board table. So what we need to do is to make sure that we don't end up having um, data errors in our database. We need to set a referential um, constraint. So we can do that by doing table foreign board ID. So we're telling SQL that this is a foreign key that references ID on uh, on our boards table and on delete we want to cascade that change so if we delete a to do we want to tell or if a board is deleted we need we need those changes to cascade throughout the database so we don't have any errors or at least we what this will mean is that if we try and delete something without properly um, thinking about, well, if we delete this, what we don't want to happen is we don't want to have a to-do um, or, or a board that doesn't exist and a to-do that then doesn't have a board. And this referential constraint will ensure that can't happen. We'll get some kind of error if we try and do that. Um, so also another good thing about putting this constraint in now in Laravel, which a lot of people don't bother, but you should, is that when we do our migration, if we've made a mistake with this relationship, we will get an error and won't be able to do it. And that's good. We want things, when things are wrong, we would rather that it crashes than we don't notice it and we send it to um, production or something. So we've added this here. now. If I migrate now, there will be an error. And there'll be an error because the order I created these migrations in are the order that Laravel will perform the migrations. That means that the first thing it will do is create the to-dos table. And so it will create a to-dos table, and then it will try to um, specify this referential constraint, but the boards table won't exist yet. So it will give me an error. So I need to change the order that these migrations happen in. And the way you do that, it seems a bit clunky, but it's fine, um, is that I'm gonna, is changing the date on these migration files. So I'm gonna rename this file. And I'm just gonna change this to eight. And now you can see that it's, it will do this migration first. It just goes down in the order and um, that they're sorted in there. So, so we've set up our relationship kind of in the database. The migration files are kind of, we can think about that as doing our SQL where we're building our database. And then our classes are where we actually can, um, there are our models and where we, we edit, we create methods and uh, functions that help us interact with the database in our application. 
So let's start with the to do. Uh, no, actually, let's start with the board. Okay. Um, so uh, we want to start out by oh, let's bring this down. Uh, something I'm going to add here is I'm going to put. I want to be able to um, fill out the um, the different columns in this um, in these entries uh, like pretty quickly and so I'm going to set this fillable um, variable here and what this does is this tells Laravel that I want to be able to do mass assignment so what that means is that in a single line I can set the title and description now this it's by default this is all blocked so you have to actually go in and whitelist the certain parameters or um, fields that you want that to happen to. If you just blanket let any of those fields be mass assigned, you leave yourself open to security risks because that means people can potentially assign values that you don't want them to be able to assign. You can imagine someone like um, could be able to change their role if it's like make themselves admin or something if you made that fillable so i but i want to be able to set title and description with one line just to help us um, test things out quickly so the board has many to do's and we want to be able to just in a single line of code without doing any manual queries get all of the to do's associated with this board and so we need to create a function to do that and we're going to create a function to do's and when we call to do's we want to get an array of all of the to do's that are related to the um, to this particular board now Lara, we could write our own function in here and do manual SQL and return an array of those of to do's and that would work fine but Laravel knows this is something that a lot of people do so we can just use um, some built-in functions one of which is called has many and as long as you've followed the conventions for um, foreign key naming, then this will work absolutely fine. And we have done that. And I'll talk about some conventions um, as we go. So this has set up our relationship between board and um, to do's. But to do our many to many relationship, we're going to need a pivot table. And so we need to create that pivot table ourselves. So let's do that now. In fact, I can push up to save myself time. Um, so I don't want to make a model. We're not going to have a model for our pivot um, table. We just want the table itself. So I'm going to just make a migration. <clears throat> and the table, it's important. So I was talking about conventions. It's important that your pivot table follows the convention of Laravel. Well, that will just make it easier for you. You can override these things, and it's actually relatively simple to do, but it's easier when you're starting out just to stick to um, the conventions. So the convention for Laravel is if you've got two models you want to connect by a pivot table, the pivot table should be um, the, it's in alphabetical order, one model underscore the other model. So in our case, it's tag underscore to do. And what um, Laravel also does is because I camel cased to do there, it'll um, separate those with an underscore as well. Um, so that caught me out earlier. So that's the name, that's the correct name for this, is that we have tag to do table. Um, and I'll run that. So now that's created our tag to do table here. Now this is where we want to set up our relationship. So because it's a pivot table, we don't have to set up relationships in our individual tag and to-do models. It's all done here. Um, so by default, the primary key is going to be created as we as these like automatically. We don't want that. In the case of a pivot table, we want to have a composite key. So we're going to say primary, which we're actually specifying the primary key is going to be um, our tag ID and our to do ID. 
and then we need to add our foreign keys so let's do that now so table unsigned big integer tag id so all this every entry in this pivot table it all it does is connect a tag to a to-do id in some cases you might want to actually there's nothing stopping you adding another field here and, and maybe there is some information you want to add to your pivot table that makes sense you might even have a pivot table that itself is a model like that that's something you can do um, and then we want to set up our constraints i'm going to uh, just copy and paste from here so we need tag id references id on tags um, and then our to do uh, to do id references id on to do Z. so remember it pluralizes the table name there so now we've set up so now the database should be set up correctly when we run the migration but we need to still add some methods to our models so we can actually use these in laravel like using the orm um, so we go to to do and let's do the fillable thing again so i'm going to do protected fillable equals our title and our description also here i'm going to set a default value so i can say attribute and what this does is we can set a default value so i'm going to set completed set to false which is what we would expect right we expect um is we would expect that to be the case that when we create a to do that it initially is false so i'm going to add two methods the first one i'm going to add is the um is to get the board that this is that this to do is associated with and much like before we could write our own queries here but laravel knows we're going to be doing this a lot so there's a, a shortcut and because we followed the conventions it will work um, by the way, if you make a mistake with the conventions, Laravel will return um, the SQL error. So you can look at the SQL error and you can see what it expected you to have. So like I often do that kind of trial and error stuff, not deliberately, but if I make a mistake, you know, we all make mistakes. And But it just tells you what's wrong. Um, sometimes you might find if you make mistakes, it's hard to fix. And the great thing about using Vagrant is that a way I would... I often fix things is I just destroy the virtual machine and restart it and um, sometimes you can get a bit things can get a bit messy now we also want a function that's going to give our tags and this is where we use return uh, this so much like the board had so our, in, in the board we did the to do's has many now we're doing tags belongs to many and then app this is the model name okay so that's our two we've we've got our, made it fillable we've added our relationship um, and then we can do the same now with our tag so again we can do protected fillable equals name and public function to do's there we go so we've got everything set up so now we just need to go to our terminal and so i'm logged into the virtual machine i'm logged into vagrant and i'm going to run php artisan migrate Okay, good. We had no errors. I'm always a little bit like, you never know. Um, and then what we're going to do is to test this all out. I'm going to open up Tinker. I'm going to play around a bit and show you that this is all set up and working. So we're going to do php artisan 
tinker. The first thing I want to do is load in um, our models, our model namespace. So let's use app to do, use app board. And again, I can push up to get the last thing I typed in, tag. Now, the order that we do things here does matter because much like with our migrations, our models will want to reference each other. So our to do, it belongs to a board. So it needs to have a board saved in the database so it can set that primary key or the foreign key to that board. If we don't do that first, we're going to cause ourselves a bad, you know, we're going to have a bad time. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a board. So I'm going to do board equals. And because I set up the fillable stuff, I can just create it like this. So I'm going to do title. Uh, and you set it like this, so I can set the title board one and the description. Um, oh, uh, did I spell that wrong? So talking of mistakes, I made a mistake. So I was trying to grab use app slash to do here because in previous versions of Laravel, that's where it put the models. But here it's put the models in the models folder. So I need to add the models um, there, which also means I need to go through and edit all of my where I've added these belongs to many here. Um, so I'm going to do that now. But I thought instead of editing it out and starting again, I think it's important for you to see that like we all make mistakes and we keep making mistakes. But the important thing is understanding what that mistake is um, and how to fix those mistakes is almost more important. Like it's a really important skill to be able to fix mistakes, um, especially in coding. Okay, let's have a look now then. So if I did I exit? Yeah, right. So I'm going to start again. So I'm going to open up Tinker. And then I'm going to call in all my model namespaces. Um, board. And there's a quick check. So I like if I do um, board get. Okay, so if you see it's actually already got um, the the entry that I entered. So I ran this command. So board create. And then because in the board model, I set these two things fillable. I can just create that entry using this function just like this. So I'm setting the um, the fields there and I don't even need to save it. So, but I am going to, I need to get, I need to actually get that board out again. So I'm going to do board equals board uh, get zero. Okay. So now I've got that in a variable here in board. The next thing I want to do is create a to do. So this one, I can't use that create method because I, if I need, well, I could, I don't want to, I'm going to explain why I don't want to now. I want to show you a, a method. So, so I'm going to do to do one equals new to do. Like I'm showing you a different way of doing it for a reason. So that creates a, a new to do and you can see it's set completed false because I set attributes completed false by default. Okay, so that's got a default value. Um, but what I can do here now is I can do to do one fill and then I'm just going to copy and paste. Uh, let's do this. So I'm grabbing it, selecting it left clicking on it. Oh, no, that doesn't work, does it? In Windows, right, that's it. So I'm going to drag into select, control C, and then right clicking to paste um, in bash. So this works because um, I've got the same fields in my to do and my board. So just changing these. Okay. 
So I've got my to do there that's got everything in it. But what it doesn't have, it doesn't have the foreign key to a board and it's got to have a board. So if we saved it now, I'd get an error. So I don't want to do that or I'm not going to just save it directly. I'm going to use the board to save it. OK, so we've got our, our board that's a, an object in our database. I'm going to get the to do's, which is a method that we we added. If you remember, we added this has many. And then I can do save to do. And so what's what that does is that attaches this to do to this board. Now I'm not sure and I'm going to see now to do get. And it's even saved it in the database. OK, so it actually saves that to do in the database to this particular board, which is a really useful tool because it means you don't have to mess around with actually getting the ID of the board and then setting the ID manually. It just does it. And this is what this OR, ORM stuff is all about. It's about making this these kind of relationships, building these things easier. It feels more like you're just doing object or decoding. It's not, it doesn't feel like you're doing database stuff. Um, so we can check that that works. So to do one, I can now just access the board and get the title. There we go. Great. Now let's look at our tags and many to many. So I'm going to do tag one equals new tag. There we go. So I'm going to do tag one name equals tag one. And then I can save it. So tag one. So I'm saving this in the database. Now because it's a many to many, like the tag doesn't need the tag actually would not won't have a foreign key to a a to do. It doesn't need to know. The tag itself doesn't know anything about whether or not there's any to do's uh, connected to it. It doesn't need that. It could be a tag that's just there with no to do's. Okay. It can have any number of them. Um, it's the pivot table that creates the relationship. So I'm going to save that. Then I'm going to do my to do one tags. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the board. Save uh, tag one. And it's connected those together. And it, what it will have done is created an entry in our pivot table um, to connect these things. So now I can do to do one tags and you can see what's kind of cool here is you can see now what's going on we've got it showing that the pivot table here is connecting to do id1 to tag id1 and so we could create more tags and just add them to that to do we could create more to do's and, and add different tags and, and add all sorts have another board add different boards pretty you know simply and this is kind of like the more you kind of get into this the more you should start to get a feel of how this stuff works and always remember you just go look at the documentation if you're stuck um, and the great thing about Tinker is you can just play around with stuff in here and see how it works so thanks for watching and if you want me to do any other videos on any other stuff just let me know somehow um, even in the comments email me if you're on the course all that kind of stuff Thanks. Bye.